Right now, you're looking at the inside of my computer. There's a motherboard, processor, hard drives, RAM, and video card. All of this makes up the hardware that works together to run games. And the better the hardware, the better the experience. Faster load times, better graphical settings, and higher frame rates. But hardware isn't everything. Especially nowadays, with all of the always online multiplayer games, there's another key factor. And that's this. Well, this is just a cable. But what comes through this is the internet. The faster internet means better speeds, lower latency, a more reliable connection, all of which comes together to make for a much better multiplayer online experience. Especially right now on the cusp of 5G, the need for a hardline connection just gets smaller and smaller. Now, Nokia is sponsoring this video. They asked me to head out to Berlin to check out their 5G tech for myself. Now, even though I don't ever leave the house to do much gaming, I'm always interested in faster speeds and better connections. So, let's head to Berlin. actually really really good. Tastes good. See how good, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're here now at the Computerspiel Museum in Berlin, Germany. I'm going to hop in to check out the past of gaming before we look at the future. Let's go. Oh, check this out. This is an old like arcade. I'm going to have to bump this up for you guys. I never went to arcades too much. That was definitely more a little before my time. Although arcades are kind of making like a uh, a comeback nowadays. Arcades were more a thing before people had a lot of stuff in their own house. So this is really cool. This is the wall of hardware dating back. Starting in 1975, we've got like a bunch of different hardware and basically goes throughout the year. This is actually exactly what I was hoping for, like a history of gaming console hardwares from the beginning up until more modern day. So that's pretty neat. I'm just gonna go beginner. You're just gonna do my feet? All right. I'm just gonna get different shots. These are totally the moves that I married you for. What you about me? Nothing. Half-Life 3 confirmed. These kind of games are really fun. Oh, this is like super common. This is what I should play to yeah. help me sleep at night. This coming up here, this next section, is basically like just a bunch of living room setups. And it's funny because this is really, whether or not it was my own room or friends of mine, like this is really super reminiscent. So that's it. Uh, took a look through the whole museum. This was a really cool experience getting to take a look at some of the games of the past and peer back into my childhood and all the different games that I played. But it also at the same time really makes me think about like from the past to now, what a big difference it is. But what about the future? Like what's gonna be the big thing in the future? Low latency plays a big role in uh, having a better gaming experience. And that's kind of why Nokia brought me out here is to talk about the future of gaming, low latency gaming in particular, as it relates to 5G. So let's go talk about it. Okay, so we're here at the Amplifier today. Uh, this is this cool little event space where they basically set up different VR games that I can check out to see the difference between like what a 4G and 5G multiplayer experience is. And we'll, we'll just jump in and play a few of them and see what it's like. <laughs> so I'm testing the... <laughs> <laughs> testing the responsiveness of the... I married you for your posture. <laughs> I love when you look like this. It's really smooth. It almost seems like the, like the frame rate's better too. Everything's just a lot smoother when it switches over. All right, I'll try it. Let's get... Yeah! I, that 4G goalie sucks. Now you're looking at this cube and you might ask, okay, so does the the cube, is it more responsive when you're turning and trying to match up the colors? I guess technically yes, with the lower milliseconds, but I think the big showcase for this is it's rendering the cube in the network and it's kind of smartly determining where I am and where to render this, which for the cube might not be as big of a deal to you, but for graphically intensive games and multiplayer games, rendering closer to you makes a big difference. Is that, that's kind of, more or less. That's exactly it, yeah. So Jason Elliott uh, with Nokia, and what exactly is it that you do? Yeah, so I'm the 5G uh, marketing manager at Nokia. So uh, we talk about 5G technology to our service provider customers and also to uh, general audiences as well, to tell them how a 5G technology will apply to their areas of business or to uh, the general public as well, and mm -hmm. different industry forums. I feel like a, a lot of people, if they hear 5G, 
They're just like, well, I'm on 4G. How is it, is, is it going to make my email experience better? <laughs> Refreshing Twitter better. I guess what are the, the spe like some of the specific implications of the advantages that will come with 5G tech? Absolutely. So in the first phase of 5G, we talk about adding extra capacity into the network. So uh, more of us can connect to the network. We can stream more data as well. Um, and also we lower the delay in the network. So this is the time it takes to transmit information from your device to the network and back again. We call that latency. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really important for gaming, for example, in, on, uh, for, for the general public audiences, you know, where we think about now we could possibly stream the games from the cloud um, we can do that with uh, 5G because of this lower network delay or latency that we call it, um, and also the additional capacity. So more of us can connect to the network, we get a better experience because of this lower delay in the network and more consistency or reliability of the service as well as another key factor. All right, so behind me, is the uh, ping pong demo. Like we have the other demos and they're good. The, the soccer, football one, the lower latency, the 5G goal keep is, you know, it's harder to shoot by, but actually a, an interactive game where you actually are seeing the difference in latency with the ping pong paddle and the ball, I think is, it's just a better showcase of the tech. I even know for myself, like I don't necessarily gaming on the go very often, but even my hardline connection, probably somewhere between 50 and 100 for most of the games that I play. Yeah. But being able to play 5G and knowing that that's something that theoretically I could just like pick up a device and leave my house and right. play at latencies as low as like three, it's, yeah. it was in the ballpark of three milliseconds. Yeah, a multiplayer experiences. This is where, you know, you really need that low latency because um, as you're playing together as a team or you're playing against opponents, you want to make sure that the time you trigger a, a, an action to do something, that it actually happens in that time frame and right. that, that, that you're not, you don't have that lag there because otherwise, you know, the experience isn't good and you, you don't want to have that kind of service. That's right. The thing. So that's critical. Okay. This has been an interesting experience uh, coming here to check out some of the the 5G stuff and they had these demos set up for me and it's not like, it's obviously not like my typical gameplay experience. Like this isn't my typical online multiplayer game. It's not like an MMO or uh, FPS or a lot of the things where this kind of tech would actually make a difference. But low latency connection is I think applicable to anybody. It doesn't really matter. And I know not everybody is really interested in streaming gaming future. Like there's a lot of concerns. People are just worried. Like I don't want all my games to just be streamed. I'd like to own them, people like physical copies. That part isn't as really as hard for me to get over. The biggest concern with like the streaming service part of games, and we're seeing it come up from a bunch of different companies, the biggest concern is really just internet. Like even my hardline internet that I have at home, isn't that super reliable? And if 5G can truly deliver, like that'd be great. I mean, a low latency gaming experience is in, is a low latency gaming experience. Whether I get that through the hardline or whether I get that digitally, it's gonna take time for that stuff to become available in different parts of the world. It's, I guess in a lot of ways, it's like landlines. It's like, yeah, you have to wait until that tech becomes available to you. Now, from everything that I've, they've talked about with me today, Nokia is doing is providing the opportunity and setting those systems up in place so that internet service providers, whoever you pay your monthly bill for to get your internet, can take advantage of that and put that out to people. So first off, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it's a little bit different, but I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to know what you guys think about uh, this topic, like the future of 5G and gaming, as Nokia is putting it, hashtag tech possible. What do you guys feel like 5G could mean for gaming's future? Or 5G is specifically, but just a higher, reliable, consistent internet, and what sort of things that that could unlock? Because it really, it really could do a lot to open up the capability Abilities of the types of games that we play. Now, if you are interested in the future of tech in general, I have linked another cool Nokia Tech Possible video below on how a famous beatboxer trained AI to beatbox like him. And you guys can check out Nokia's IGTV for more content as well. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun to put together. Thanks again to Nokia for sponsoring this. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.